All right, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Jewels with our Jeskai Thopters deck. If you haven't checked out the deck tech, then be sure to do so. It should already be out. A um, little bit of an update. Uh, I've still got a horrible cough, so if you hear any awkward silences in the game, it's because I'm choking on oxygen. So just keep that in mind. Um, as always, this episode is sponsored by Five Color Combo, so if you do check the description, you'll find a link to their website where you can find some really cool Magic the Gathering tokens made by real Magic the Gathering artists, so if that's something that interests you, then be sure to check it out. Alright guys, I'll see you in the games. Alright, we are in, we have cards, they are bad, we will throw them back. Um, oh, this one ain't great. But it has a turn three chief into some PNLR Thopter action. Uh, there's better hands, but there's also worse hands, and worse hands might just be uh, ones with less cards in them. So we're gonna take it, as much as I don't really want to. Our opponent is rank 38, called Deep Blue. Okay. Rootbound Crag. Okay, we are going to sack our Evolving Wilds and go get our one-off planes. Because I don't see a white source in our hand other than the Ether Hub, so we might as well grab it. A Glimmer of Genius is not bad. I will take a Glimmer of Genius. And pass the turn. Hmm. Jaddy Offshoot. Okay. Potentially a Landfall deck with blue. I don't know what this deck is. It seems like a random mishmash of horribly weird things. Okay. Uh, that's actually not too bad. That allows us to thin our deck and then next turn we could chief and uh, pump it up. Or maybe we want a PNR. But we definitely want a Pilgrim's Eye right here. It's going to allow us to thin our deck and reduce the odds of us drawing another one. Because we don't want any more lands anymore. We've got all of the lands that we need. So we need another blue by the looks of it. So I'll go get an island. And pass the turn. Got myself some honey and lemon flavoured menthol lozenges. To hopefully not choke and cough for the entire of this uh, this video. Ooh, Nissa, Vastwood Seer. So when she enters the battlefield, you get a forest... And if you've got seven or more, I believe. Uh, yep, seven or more lands, she transforms into her Planeswalker side. So, we're a bit far off that, but we're expecting some ramp, apparently. Ooh, Padim. Padim's actually really good, because he has no artifacts out at the moment. And he won't be able to get rid of our artifacts. Padim's going to give it Hexproof. So, actually, the extra card advantage is probably better than the extra damage here, I think. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm torn on that one. Because we could play PNLR. Uh, Pier and Kieran. We get a 2 2 with extra 2 2s. With an extra 2 damage in the air. But then we probably want a Chief, and then we're not getting the card advantage. I think Padim. Just for extra card draw. Ah. Hmm. Uh, board wipe wise he's only really got radiant flames to deal with other than targeted removal and that's going to get rid of his nissa i reckon he's going to be like explosive vegetationing next turn anyway so we've definitely got another turn i don't think any of them are really bad plays i'm just not sure on the ordering of which to do them i think i'll just go for deem i like drawing cards it's the best part of the game let's be honest and let's get in with our 1-1 now Hexproof Flyer. Get rid of some of that Jaddy Offshoot value. Hmm. I'd like to see the um, Thopter Engineer, I think she's called. The one that gives them haste. That would be nice. That would have made my decisions a lot easier. Because mainly the problem is dealing with the summoning sickness side of it. All right. This is clearly a, um, a trick that I'm not going to fall for. I'd rather just take the two damage anyway because we're on 20. So there's really no need to take that risk. So we have a an artifact with greater power and toughness and we get some lovely cards. Wonderful. 
All right, Ether Hub comes down, gains us some energy. Um, now I do think I will go P and Nala, P and Kira and Nala. Just get that extra bit of damage on the board. We can start really pushing through some damage next turn now. Because our Chief of the Foundry is going to pump up all of our Thopters as well. So that's an extra three damage that Chief of the Foundry is going to be able to produce. It's going to stop him from wanting attacking with his Nissa as well. Just because we have a lot of chump blockers here. That it's just not worth attacking in with. If he doesn't play an artifact, we are going to draw an extra card as well. So our card advantage is going to persist. You really... Yeah. I'll just jump it. I really don't know why he's doing that. But... Eh. I just feel like he's... Going to be doing some tricks with shenanigans otherwise. Telling time, you have to look at the top three cards, put one into your hand, one on top of your library, and one on the bottom. So he has to filter the top three cards, essentially. Finds himself a land, gains some life. Hmm. And passes the turn. So we are going to draw two cards. If our opponent doesn't do something about Padim, this card advantage is going to get the better of him. It really is. So, Westvale Abbey. Hello. I think our opponent's disconnected. Yep. There he goes. I think our opponent realises that they are very much going to lose this game. So, Chief of the Foundry. Give our Thopters plus one, plus one. And then we'll just Pilgrim's Eye. Thin out our deck again so that Padim's not drawing us into lands. Because we have been fairly flooded here. Doesn't really matter what colour we go for. We've got all of the colours in doubles. So. I should have attacked him with these two actually. That was a mistake. He could block one but then. We get an extra one damage in. So it's not going to matter too much. But every little helps. If he wins on one life. Then we'll wish that we did. So we can actually Armandol whenever we want now. Which is pretty sweet. So if he does go for a board wipe, for example, we can just sack our entire board off. Yeah, there's the Radiant Flames. It's kind of what I expected. So we're going to lose everything but Padim. And then he goes for another Jaddy offshoot. We've got plenty of ways to get back into this, though. But we don't have the extra artifact to do that. Uh, let's go Sulphur Falls. And let's get some more artifacts on the battlefield, I guess. Get that Padim action back on track. Could even attack him with Padim. If he blocks, then we sack a Thopter and kill his Jaddy offshoot, which gets rid of that life gain that's so annoying right now. Let's try that out. See if he wants to fall for that trap. He does. Okay. So, pay three, kill that, sacrifice a Thopter. Sweet. No more life gain for you. He has slowed us down quite significantly, but we're getting back on track quite quickly. Does he have another board wipe? No, he does not. So we're back on card draw again. Plus our uh, Glimmer of Geniuses are just doing it for us. Ooh, Thopter Engineer. That's what I want to see. So, Thopter Engineer gives all of our artifacts haste, including the one that comes out with it. Sweet. And let's just get in with everyone. Hmm. Five damage. And... Yep, pass the turn. We've got Glimmer of Genius held up. We've got Harness Lightning held up. That couldn't be up to four with our extra energy that we've got. Because we don't really need the coloured mana from the Ether Hub anymore. But I don't think we're going to see any of that. We can also sack an artifact. Ooh, Chandra. Yeah, you're a problem. 
we might see you minusing, and if you do, yeah, okay, this is a problem. So, you've minus four, so you're going to actually wipe our entire board. Let's deal two damage to our opponent on the way out. And say goodbye to our board. We do have Glimmer of Geniuses in order to regen. Where were you, like, ten turns ago? You're the reason that you're in here is for the situations that we've been dealing with. God damn it. Right, let's get all of our colour, colourless mana spent while we can. Let's find some answers. Chief of the Foundry and Inventor's Fair. We'll just take Chief here. Meh. Nah. Uh. Well, our options are thus. Selfless Spirit plus Chief or just Glimmer of Genius to try to set up a better hand. I think extra damage on the board is pretty sweet. He's used a lot of his board wipes, so I don't really expect many more. Worst case scenario, if he does go for another board wipe, we sacrifice Selfless Spirit in response to just keep our Chief of the Foundry. Hmm. He's had a lot of perfectly timed board wipes as well. So he wiped our board the first time when we could have had Westvale Abbey open, but we tapped out the turn before, so... If he'd allowed us to untap, I would have just left it up for the entire game. Ooh, Jason Raveler of Secrets. Probably seeing a minus ability here, would be my guess. He can plus up to six and scry and draw. Or he can minus two and bounce one of our creatures. Fall of the Titans. X damage to up to two target creatures and or players. Okay. Well. The correct move there is to just sacrifice in response. Doesn't really make a difference. But. We'll see. And he's going to plus up to six. Yeah, this, uh, this opponent's very annoying. Ooh, Will of Virtuoso. Alright, play a land. We can do both here, I think. Three, yeah, we'll definitely do both. Alright, we'll go Glimmer first. See if we can get a Thopter Engineer. <clears throat> Another Chief is pretty good. We'll take the Chief. We get a Chief and a Glimmer. So, here I think we Chief and Will of Virtuoso. Just for the most mana efficient play. Allows us to get three in on Jace. And then he, if he wants to bounce our creature, we go and create a Thopter for the last little bit of damage. I think it's pretty alright. We don't have any protection against board wipes, so. I'm gonna try not to play into it too much. Get in. On his end step, we'll create some Thopters as well. Just because they're going to be three threes, and that's probably enough to close out this game now. Depending on what our opponent does. We're actually clear of Radiant Flames here with our Chiefs, but Will of Virtuoso won't be able to get free, nor will the Thopters. Green Warden of Marassa <coughs> taps him out. What does he go and grab? Chandra the Cat Cast. I think we've got him here. Because even if he minuses, we just recast it. We've got two extra Thopters that we're going to be able to cast. He's going to plus and scry and draw. And that's just going to be the game. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Three energy, create a Thopter. Three energy, create a, cop a Thopter. Six damage in the air. And, ooh, extra damage in the air. We're just going to harness lightning this guy away, though. Four damage to you. Clears the board. He gets back a fall of the titans that he can't cast. And we just swing in for lethal. <coughs> GG. Three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. Boosh.
Awesome. That was a lot of board wipes, and we still managed to fight our way through them, so it's a good sign for this deck. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next game. All right, we're in. Uh, this is too much of an expensive hand with two little lands, so we can't take that. Uh, this one has a turn 3 Sahile, so I'm going for this, because I really want to play Sahile, it'll be the first time. So, Evolving Wilds, we'll crack it for a blue, because we can, and pass the turn. Our opponent is rank 40, called Lawrence Odell, I'm assuming. It could be Lauren C. Odell, who knows. I'm not going to assume your gender, don't you worry. Alright, our turn comes, and we get a Glacial Fortress. We might as well play it. So we actually have our turn 4 plays, so that Sahili can mine us and make copies of Willerog and Pier and Kieran the La. Although, don't really want to be making copies of Pier and Kieran the La, to be honest. Another red. Is our opponent mono red? That'd be cool. Alright, Mountain into Sahili Rai. And plus two scry and deal one damage. We have no targets for the minus, so we might as well plus. Chief of the Foundry. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good enough to me. One feature I would like added to this game, uh, Stainless, if you're listening. I would love for my opponent, and to know what my opponent has scryed to the top or bottom. It seems like really important information that's just not being given. How does my opponent know that I did not hate that card, for example? It's just something that I really think should be included, and it's just not. Alright, well, Whirler Rogue. Gonna make some 2-2s. Two Fiery Impulse to take down the Whirler Rogue. So we don't get to make a copy here, but we do still get our Thopters. Fair play, opponent. Fair play. We're just gonna scry again. And a Harness Lightning. I'm going to bottom Harness Lightning. We don't have the, any use for the energy. And we also have Collective Defiance as our removal. Our burn there. For the same reason. Although we don't have the double red. That's a problem. Tyler's Tracker. Gets himself a clue. A Raging Clue, one might say. And a Whirler Virtuoso. Uh, let's see. Um, we need a blocker back. I think that goes without saying. So Pilgrim's Eye is probably the blocker that we want. Then I can minus to get an extra land from the Pilgrim's Eye as well. And that one gains haste and we get to attack him with it. So, yeah. I don't think that's good enough. The other alternative is playing Chief, getting it for four... Also minusing, but I don't want to block with the chief. That's the issue here. Really don't want to be blocking with the chief, so... As good as that option is, I think the slower play, but better turnout is using the pilgrim's eye here. Grabbing the double red that we need to get rid of Tyler's tracker, because he won't be able to get that out of range. We already have our white source, so we don't need to worry about that. We're going to minus our Pilgrim's Eye, create another. Get another land. Get a blue, I guess. Doesn't really matter at this point. Swing in with our three creatures. We've got a blocker back for the Tireless Tracker to keep Sahili alive. And let's see. Our opponent could have removal for our Pilgrim's Eye, but it should be fine. Gains a life from the Jedi offshoot and a clue. And Nissa Vital Force. Ah, yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it. That's going to kill Sahili right there. Okay, sure. He has to send both of them at her, though. Yeah. Which means we don't have to block. Because she's going to die anyway. We can kill Nissa here, though. 
We gain one life because of the Inventor's Fair. Play out a land. And we can play two things here. We can do Chief of the Foundry so that Nissa dies. And we can also... Do I want a Collective Defiance or do I want to wait until I've got more mana untapped? I think I want to wait till I've got more mana untapped and just get a Whirl of Virtuoso down. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. So. Six damage. You killed my Planeswalker. I'll kill yours. Screw you, opponent. Gotcha. And we can create a Thopter whenever we want. So we can start swinging in above our opponent. As soon as we got rid of that Tireless Tracker with the Collective Defiance as well. Then we can literally swing in with everything depending on what our opponent plays here. A Woodland Bellower. Probably for a Reclamation Sage on the Chief of the Foundry would be my guess. It's the usual go-to. Yep, there it is. Alright. Comes in for the attack. Ends his turn. We're going to create a Thopter. Because we can. We gain one life from the Inventor's Fair. And draw a land. Okay, well, I think what we want to do here is Collective Defiance, kill Tireless Tracker, and deal some damage to our opponent's face. Which leaves us with... Three mana to PNLR as well. Seems good to me. Uh, yeah, it does. So, four damage there, three damage there. Still have the red mana open, which is what I was questioning. We get Thopter Queen with a Thopter to throw away from the Woodland Bellow if we want to block it. Probably not. I'd rather have the flyers in this situation because red green does not have a lot of reach or flyers. So we could probably just peer and cure in the la, get some extra thopters, which is enough to get over the top, and then finish him off with some burn. So he's going to sack the clues. He's looking for a board wipe, is my guess. If he doesn't find one here, he's not casting it this turn. And Nissa's Pilgrimage instead to go grab two forests. Yeah, two forests. He doesn't have Spell Mastery online. If he had Spell Mastery, then he could get three instead. If you attack, I'm not blocking. And I get a little bit of extra damage in. So that's fine with me. We're on 22, so what does it really matter? Plus, we're gaining one from the Inventor's Fair as well. Does a Chief of the Foundry win it here? I don't know. Probably not. Actually, does it? Um, we'd need an extra land in order to play it off the Inventor's Fair, unfortunately. But that would have been an extra 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It would not be quite enough, but it would be close. But, uh, Peer and Kieran Nala is going to create some Thopters, and we also get to sacrifice one after we block to deal some extra damage to our opponent. So he blocks the 2 3. We get in for 7. Peer and Kieran Nala creates two Thopters for blockers. One of them we're going to sack and deal two damage to our opponent. I think that's just going to do it. Short of a board wipe here. But even through a board wipe, we've got another P and Kieran. For an extra 6 damage if we attack and sack both of the Thopters. Explosive Vegetation. Grabs 2 more basics. Really getting close to thinning his deck here, but he's only gaining 1 life for each of them. It does stabilize him somewhat. And Sylvan Advocate is going to be a 4-5 with Vigilance. He's coming in for an attack here. We're going to block with one. Pause. Sack it to deal two damage to our opponent. 
We're only taking two. Yeah, our opponent's had enough. He sees the writing on the wall. Game one life. And that's actually going to do it right there. So if we float mana, play Inventor's Fair, Legend rule it. Uh, we want to keep this one. Sack it. Go search up a Chief of the Foundry. Play a Chief of the Foundry. All of our Thopters and Artifacts get plus one, plus one. That's game. GG. All right, Thopters. Still really good. Awesome. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. So if you enjoyed the content, be sure to leave a like. It helps me out a great deal. Let let's me know you're enjoying the content. And in the current situation of YouTube, really, really helps me out. So be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. And subscribe if you haven't already for more Magic Jewels content as well as other stuff. And if you're not sure what that is, then stay for the end card where you'll also find the deck tech and other content that you can check out. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.